Good evening, I'm Allison Lebovitz, and welcome to our second time to do a live special episode of Hamilton County Schools Continued Learning. We're here in the studio at WTCI. We are practicing our social distancing. If you saw us last week, we have uh, peace. There we go. That, right. that was Dr. Remember. Johnson's greeting of the night. Um, you can see the number down at the bottom of your screen. If you want to talk to any of the Hamilton County Schools leadership team, they are right here in the studio accepting your calls at 498 Five four three seven. There is an option for to speak in English if you press one, or Spanish if you press two. And with me, of course, who needs no introduction, is our superintendent of Hamilton County Schools, Dr. Brian Johnson. Dr. Johnson, welcome again. Thank you. Thank you for having us again. Yes, I'm. I'm sorry for why you're here because it means that we're still in crisis mode Thank and in you. our new normal. But I'm always glad to see you. Good to see you as well. So before we get into all of the updates that you want to provide for all of our our viewers right now we know you you have parents out there and students and teachers and grandparents and and even just concerned community members and in a week a lot has changed but true to PBS style we sort of are going off a word of the night that we really want to incorporate with all of our segments and um, if some of you may remember there was a show called The Electric Company. Dr. Johnson, we have already established, is too young. But one Don't of my remember. favorite shows on PBS was The Electric Company, and they did this thing where they would do two different syllables to create a word, and we're going to try that at home. For, so for some of you, this may be a throwback, and I'm going to let Dr. Johnson start with his syllable. All right, I've got the first part of the show that I don't remember. It's a uh, grrr. And so we know right now there is some absolute frustration with what has become our new normal. And uh, you may be in a moment where you're just uh, a little bit frustrated and saying, grr, what's going on? And then I've got the second part of the word, which is ace. And we know a lot of you, like I know I have struggled with, trying to be perfect this first week, right? This new normal presents a lot of challenges and we're trying to have the perfect virtual classroom and the perfect work from home space and everybody's trying to get along and you're trying to ace everything and it's just not possible. So what we're gonna hope you do is put the grr with the ace to create grace. So grace is gonna be and I actually came prepared. Grace is going to be the word of the night. And we hope the word of the night and of the week and as we continue through this crisis in your household. And we hope to give you some tools and resources um, that will give you the assets that you need to, to find grace in your home. Because it's important, right? Absolutely, it's so important. Um, as, as it's been shared, this is an unprecedented moment in time for us as a community, uh, as a school district, obviously as parents. I'm a parent myself and understand the challenge that exists. And we want uh, the community to know that we hear you and we're listening. Uh, we have a hotline established, and you mentioned obviously we're taking calls tonight, uh, but we have a hotline that's ongoing uh, that we encourage parents to reach out to uh, us and ask us questions that you may have as they, as they come up. We want you to have grace with us because we promise you we don't know every answer because this is new learning for us as well, uh, but we will continue to go forward. Um, additionally, you know, Alison, one of the things I'd share as well is that we've talked a lot about continued learning mm -hmm. and uh, we are a learning organization as a school system and we want our, our students and our teachers and leaders to continue to challenge themselves uh, to learn and to support the learning of students. Uh, but also with that continued learning, we've just been amazed at what has come out of that, uh, that learning over the, over the course of the last week or so and what our teachers are doing. How do you think we're doing as a community? When you look out, I know it's only been a week. It feels, feels like a lifetime already has passed. And I know so much has changed on an hour by hour, day by day basis. When you look at the landscape of learning, how, how do you think we're doing right now? I think it is amazing, uh, first of all, to see the community band together to meet just the most basic needs that students have. And so when I start to think about feeding students, uh, when I start thinking about the support for families, uh, whether it be the United Way, Chattanooga 2.0, the Chattanooga Food Bank, there have been so many entities that have come together to make sure that our students uh, are supported. And then from a learning standpoint, our teachers have been phenomenal. And I was, on, um, I was online earlier, and Emma Mullins, a music teacher uh, at Lakeside, uh, saw a, a, a snippet of her doing some phenomenal things. Another teacher, Valerie Carpenter at Best T. Shepherd, a kindergarten teacher, just, just thinking outside of the box. Um, there's a P teacher and I, uh, Coach Wood was going to have me engaged, I believe, here in a couple of days and, and some exciting exercises, which I need. And so uh, just amazing what our teachers have done. 
And it's amazing because these teachers are already innovative. They're already engaging. They're already managing so much. So now to take that to a virtual classroom, we know is adding another layer of intensity and challenge yes. to what is already, as parents are finding out, an already stressful and challenge, challenging situation. But again, we're talking about grace, right? Absolutely. It, this virtual classroom doesn't have to be perfect, right? No, and and you have already put in, I think, some some ways for the teachers, the students, and the families to be able to, to take a breath and not Absolutely. worry so much about the academic rigor that Absolutely. they face while maintaining that excellence, Absolutely. but the rigor not being so stressful. Yeah, so as a parent, um, and I just think about in my household, um, as parents, a lot of times you aren't experts in the content of the curriculum that's being taught, and that's never the ask. We want students to continue to learn and progress. Grades will not be adversely impacted by what uh, what's happening over the course of uh, the next couple of weeks, several weeks, or however long we're in this situation. Uh, we do want learning to continue. Uh, most of our schools have set up structures to be able to turn the work back in, to be able to provide feedback over time as to how students are progressing. And it gives teachers a really good launching point to understand where they may need to fill some gaps for skills. So I know that we're also on the radio as we're streaming this. I wanna just repeat the number for those of you who may be listening and not watching. That number is 423-498-5437. If you can't hear it, there are voices in the back. We've got our entire Hamilton County Schools leadership team that are, that are here with us in the studios answering your calls. Um, so we talked about grades, which I know is a huge relief to a lot of people listening because uh, I think you've got people on all sides of the spectrum. You know, the people who are just naturally academically focused and then those who may struggle a little bit. And now this is actually a way where we're sort of leveling the playing field, right? Because they really need to figure out how to learn for the sake of, of loving material. Absolutely. So this is an opportunity to really explore, uh, you know, some areas of interest uh, and to dig deeper and to spend some time uh, in really things of interest. Uh, you know, we encourage reading uh, as a foundation. And so uh, we think at all great levels where reading is, is, is uh, where students are readily available to read. We want students engaged in text. We want students writing about those texts. We want students conversing about what they've read and written about. And so it's a great opportunity to do that. And to, again, to be creative and to, and, to, and to work collaboratively with parents and with teachers. And I've seen online people are starting virtual book clubs yeah. and, and everybody is sharing resources and ideas. And you talked about this before, right? Yeah. We can't do this as a community, certainly Absolutely. not the school system, certainly not the nonprofit community, the for-profit community, without everyone banding together. We've seen this That's hashtag, right. we over me. That's right. Um, I think we have a graphic of a lot of the partners that, that have been working together. Yeah. Talk about how that has been really just impacting on a positive level what the schools are doing. It has been absolutely amazing, the response from our community to the needs of our students, uh, whether it be EPB and Wi-Fi access or whether it be additional technology, uh, whether it be, again, I, I mentioned some of the food and resources that are provided. And you know, the thing that we acknowledge during this time is that there are families in our community that have been just, they have been just shuttered by what's transpired economically. And so you have people that have lost jobs, and they're trying to provide. And so the way in which our community has really been together during this time, and will have to continue to, to support families and to support students is so critical. So I know everything changes hour by hour, as we said. You have all of these resources and all of the graphics that we see tonight, they're all on your website. They are. Okay, so they if somebody are. goes there yeah. and, and will you remind yeah. us, hcs, www.hcde.org okay. backslash coronavirus. Uh, we really got out in front as the name changed to COVID-19, uh, but coronavirus, uh, you can find a wealth of information from feeding locations uh, to continue learning information to community resources. Uh, it's kind of a one-stop shop, frequently asked questions, and we will continue and are continuing to update that site on a daily basis. All right, and on a personal level, can you give us a moment of grace that you experienced this week on uh, personally in your own household? Uh, so I have a, an eight-year-old second grader uh, that uh, picked up a learning, his second learning packet today. Uh, and so I get grace every single day that my wife allows me to uh, come to work and to show up back at home and not, uh, and not like knock me out uh, because I've been going and she's been there trying to keep a schedule and keep them on track. 
Well, I feel you. Yes. yes and, and I'm glad, you know, you're only human too, right? That's we right. have to remind That's our right. audience. So That's right. Dr. Johnson, thank you. I know thank we're going to, we're going to circle back at the end of the Absolutely. hour and you're going to go to the phone lines, right? I am. Okay. I am. Okay. I enjoy the phone lines. So when you hear someone say, this is Brian Johnson, it really is him. I know yeah. you, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you stopped a few people in their tracks last, next, yeah. last time. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Now we have got our chief of innovation and choice over. She is manning, womaning the phone lines right now and is going to give us an update on some of the questions you've been asking. Jill Levine, what's going on over there? Well, thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you, Allison, for a great first segment. Um, I have the phone lines behind me, the phone bank. The phones are ringing with great questions already, so my job is to try to answer some of those questions for you on TV. Call with your questions, 423-498-5437. I want to read one comment first that I saw online today from a parent from East Hamilton. She says, we're so impressed by the positive and proactive responses of our four kids' teachers. They they have daily schedules and lessons to follow, preset Zoom meetings during the week, and office hours for support. You all rock and are doing an amazing job. So thank you, teachers. This is a new normal. It's so different from what we do day in, day out in classrooms, but thank you for all you're doing uh, to make this work for our students. Question from Kim in East Ridge. She, oh, she also says, I just want to thank my child's teachers. So much communication. My students loved getting onto Zoom and seeing their classmates. The Zoom seems to be part of our new normal. Um, question from Danielle, a mom from Wolf Teaver Creek. She says, other states have called the year off. Are we going to call it off also, or are we going to continue to homeschool until May? I'm sure a lot of parents are wondering how long they will be homeschooling for. Um, but Danielle, the answer right now is we don't really know. We're anticipating being out of school through spring break, which goes until April 13th. But as you know, it's, we're in uncertain times, and it's a little hard to predict right now. Our hope is to get our kids back into school as soon as we are able so we'll follow state and um, you know, national guidelines for those things. Cody from North Chattanooga is hearing rumors that students won't have to take the TN ready this year. Cody wants to know if those rumors are true. Cody, yes, the rumors are true. The state is actually no longer rumor. Uh, the state passed legislation that TN Ready is suspended for this year. So we will not be doing the TN Ready tests this year. Tony from Tyner asks, will volunteer hours requirements for seniors be waived? Tony, that's another thing we're just now working through. There are so many questions like this. We have waived um, parent volunteer hours at magnet schools and um, are working through that question about senior volunteer hours. Most likely, yes, but we will get more information to, that, to you about that soon. Kathy from East Ridge would like to know, um, she says, I have two kids and just one um, device at home, just one Chromebook. Can I pick up another one? Uh, Kathy, the answer to that is yes. Uh, those dates for picking up additional devices are on our website. Uh, we'll be doing some more dates tomorrow, so check our website, www.hcde.org, and you'll be able to find that information there. We also have more devices thanks to community partners, incredible community partners who um, created a fund and raised some money. We've ordered some additional Chromebooks for kindergarten through fifth graders who don't have them yet, and those should be in in about a week, so we'll share more information about when we can deploy additional advices into the community soon. Stacy from Red Bank would like to know, will food at bus stops be available over spring break? Yes, Stacy, we will be serving food every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on our Hamilton County Schools buses for the next three weeks, and then we'll um, plan from there once we know more about how things will be handled. But be sure on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays to watch for those yellow br buses to roll into your neighborhoods. They are filled with lunches and breakfasts, juice, milk, all of those things for our students. Linda from Udawa would like to know, will the packets of be available to print at Staples? Will these packets be updated weekly? Um, well, things have changed a little bit 
from last week. Last week we printed packets for the whole district from our central office. We're now switching that responsibility over to the schools. So the answer to that, Linda, is check with your school first. You most likely have received communication from your schools. They may have printed packets there for you to pick up. They also may have those on your websites. We're going to wrap up. I'm going to send it over to Allison again, who is with Justin Robertson, our Chief of Operations. But don't forget to keep calling with your great questions. We'll answer more after this segment. 423-498-5437. Back to Allison. Thank you, Jill and Dr. Robertson. I want to make sure people know when they hear your name that <laughs> you have a brother who is also a doctor. Yes. And I love that uh, one of you once said that if you're in either of your offices, it's probably not a great sign, right? <laughs> not a good sign. You either <laughs> broke a bone or possibly got in trouble, so one or the other. Well, but the good news is you're both here to help heal the community, yes. and you of all people, so we're the word of the night we know grace. is grace. So let's talk a little bit about grace. I know you're going to talk us through not only the things that we say grace for most mm -hmm. often, which is the food and the nourishment that we're so blessed to have as a community and the access to that mm -hmm. through the school system, but also the technology that's giving our students and families access to continued learning while they're at home. Um, let's, let's start with food. I know sure. last week we talked about that no child will be, will be left hungry. Um, every family will have access um, without even showing proof of residency mm -hmm. just to be able to walk up to the school and other partners mm -hmm. to be able to get food. This week, that's even growing. How is that happening? How are we getting food to the families in need? Yeah, so it's a tremendous team. We've had a lot of support from the community. Uh, we know we've got a number of kids in our community that are food insecure. And so to make sure that kids have food, last week we started by providing them food at school locations. And today we shifted over to where we're using our bus services to provide food at elementary bus stops. So we served over 16,000 meals today uh, across the community and felt like it was just a tremendous effort. Kristen Noss, our school nutrition uh, director, her team, and then our transportation, our bus drivers, our bus assistants, just did an amazing job. And, and again, back to that word grace, I think it's important for people to remember that we are in uncharted territory. And so it's difficult for us to provide times. I know there was some frustration today in the community about uh, having to wait at stops a little bit longer than they thought and it was raining which didn't help. I think we missed a few bus stops which uh, we, we got some phone calls but we're going to make some adjustments and, and some of the things that we're going to do Wednesday hopefully to uh, adjust for this um, is hopefully provide a, a tighter schedule so that people know what schools are running what stops and provide a window that's a little bit tighter than just 11 to 1. So we're going to look at doing some waves of buses and we'll hopefully have that out tomorrow to provide parents with a little bit more of a schedule so they'll know when to expect the food, where they need to be, and, and hopefully it'll be available for them. We're doing two meals at a time. Okay. So today they got food for uh, Monday and tomorrow. Wednesday they'll get two days worth of food, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, and then we'll do the same thing on Friday. So again, 16,000 meals that we delivered today and just a tremendous effort from community partners that volunteered to uh, sit on buses and also our school nutrition and transportation services, just an amazing job. Now, for those of us who are, you know, very cognizant of the social distancing, distancing norms and um, are keeping not only our distance, but have been maybe even just sheltered in our own homes, can you give us some practical ways that you're making sure that you're not just fueling and feeding these families, but being very, very you know, cognizant of the practices that you're using on these buses to make yeah. sure that they're safe and healthy? Absolutely. So our bus drivers and the volunteers, we had one or two volunteers on each bus, so we really tried to limit the number of people on the bus. Uh, they had access to gloves, had access to hand sanitizer, uh, Clorox wipes, so any surfaces that were touched and really trying to limit the interaction uh, between the people picking up the phone or the food and the people on the bus. Now, I'll, I'll have to admit again, Grace, uh, we, we did make some mistakes and, and had a community partner that sent us an email just making us aware. One of our, our teachers that saw a kid that she hadn't seen in a week and a half, I think gave a hug or a high five or something. And so we're gonna give some uh, additional guidance about that, making sure that we are doing our part in terms of social distancing. 
but it's such an important thing that, that our kids get food. And right. so we want to make sure that we're doing that, but we are taking precautions to ensure that we're doing it in a safe way and that we're doing it uh, in a manner that serves our community. And I think this also aligns with when we talk about our most vulnerable communities, um, it's not just getting access to nutrition, right, mm -hmm. and, and sustenance, but also to access, right? right. We, how are we, I know we talked last week that 30% of the students in Hamilton County, right, which is, I mean, a staggering number, do not have access or do not have Wi-Fi in their homes. Um, I know you and your team have been working just diligently over the, this past week to change that number in terms of access. So how can people figure out and find access points near their homes who may not have, have sure. had it a week ago? Sure. So I think it's important, and when times like this happen, uh, this really comes to life, but there is a digital divide in our community and there, there are kids that don't have access to devices, don't have access to uh, technology. And so what we've done is partner with uh, some of our community providers, Comcast for example, has opened up a lot of hotspots across uh, the community and uh, EPB has really come through. They have uh, opened up or putting up 25 quick connect free Wi-Fi locations across the community and you see a map up there right now that's showing some of those locations. Right now EPB's got up, has five of these quick access sites up. They're at Clifton Hills Elementary, Mount Canaan Baptist Church on 58 Highway, East Lake Academy, Glass Street, and then Lookout Valley Elementary. And we're working with them right now to identify the other 20 locations that would best serve our community. EPB uh, also is trying to make everyone aware there are a lot of families that um, could get free internet access uh, and they're providing it up for, for 90 days. Uh, in response to this event. And so we're working with them to really target a very specific group of our students to ensure that they've got access. We're gonna be reaching out to those students and they're providing 700 um, routers that will give that access to kids. And so in the next couple of days, we'll start reaching out to those families to ensure that they know that that's an option. And uh, we have some community partners that are looking to purchase an additional, um, I think up to a thousand, which is huge. And again, so That's great. people like Comcast, EPB, and our other uh, community partners have really stepped up to close that digital divide. It's, it's amazing because every time I look on the news or I read on the internet or social media, the community coming together is just overwhelmingly heartwarming, mm -hmm. right? And especially during such a heartbreaking time and crisis that we've never experienced to see not just our community, right? But across the globe mm -hmm. that people no longer see boundaries, they see neighbors. Mm -hmm. So we know that this is part of this effort and, and I applaud all of those providers who are making sure that all of, all of our children, mm -hmm. right? Like all 44,000 in Hamilton County schools are getting access. Right. I wanna remind people that are listening on the radio, our phone lines are open. That number is 423-498-5437. Um, and you know, when we talk about technology, some of us were joking the other day that I finally was able to, to teach my parents how to send a text and it not go through email, right? <laughs> like <laughs> when we talk about a digital divide, we, we not just think about different populations, right. but we think about different generations. Mm -hmm. So how is Hamilton County Schools helping people at home navigate all of these new technologies and Zoom meetings and virtual classrooms in an era where a lot of these adults or, or older, you know, yeah. grand parents and guardians may never have picked up a smartphone or a computer? Yeah, it's a great question. So we have a YouTube channel where we usually do things like put our board meetings, but we're going to utilize um, that uh, access point for families to put up some some videos that will just show simple things. Uh, a Chromebook, when you first see a Chromebook, it's, it's a little bit different. You know, it's just basically a web browser. And so uh, turning it on, how to access the internet, how to access Zoom, we're gonna put up some videos on our YouTube channel that will walk parents through how to do that and walk kids through it. You know, I, I really think a positive that's gonna come out of this so is our teachers and our students are learning so much about how to really leverage this technology that um, on the end of this, we're gonna be better teachers, we're gonna be better learners, and, and hopefully, like you said, our community will stick together and, and look out for what's best for our kids. But I would, I would encourage people to go to our tech assistance hotline, which is on the screen now, and also visit our YouTube channel. In the next few days, we'll be putting up numerous videos that will help parents, help grandparents, and help kids utilize the technology. Okay, so everything you've talked about, it's all on the website. If they go yes. to hcde.org, they can navigate through HCS Continued Learning. Um, if you are someone who needs to, to 
get to one of those bus right. stops or, yep. or have food for your family. We're just making it as easy as possible. Again, grace is important. You know, we're, we're not perfect yet or maybe we'll ever be, but yeah. um, we're doing the best and you're doing the best, yeah. I think, to, to make sure that no, no child is left behind. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, Justin. So uh, I want to repeat this number once again. If you are listening, if you're watching, we have our Hamilton County Schools leadership team on the phones right now answering your phone calls live and in person. That number is 423-498-5437 in English and Spanish. You can, you can press one or two, one for English and two for Spanish. Um, and now we're going to go to one of our own. So we are so thrilled at WTCI that we have just recently inherited one of the most incredibly bright, uh, passionate, and education-oriented people in this community, I dare say. So don't try to snag her because we got her. Uh, Aaliyah Twight is our education outreach coordinator. And uh, true to PBS style, we have been educating kids for decades. And Aaliyah has been working feverishly to to align what PBS already does with what Hamilton County Schools is also doing to make sure that we are in alignment with learning and continued learning. Aaliyah, tell us what's going on from the PBS standpoint. Thanks so much, Allison. So we're really trying to ensure that we are fully supporting teachers, students, our community members, as well as our families. And we're really, really fortunate that PBS has a lot of incredible learning materials available for our community to use. So we're doing a couple things here at the station that might be a little bit different. First, um, our incredible Vice President of Programming, Pam Carpenter and I have been working, going through all of the inventory of available PBS programs to find those programs that align with learning objectives from not only Hamilton County Schools, but the counties of all school districts that we serve. So we've created a program that will be airing Monday through Friday, um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. From 6 to 10 a.m., you will find that there will be pre-K to third grade learning. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we will have our fourth through eighth grade learning. And from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., there's going to be our ninth through 12th grade learning. And we're including a lot of our favorite programs. Um, I myself was a PBS kid, so I made sure to include some of our favorites, including Peg and Cat, the Wild Kratz, which I think used to be called Zaboomafu, um, and of course, Arthur for our young ones. Um, for middle school, um, we're gonna be seeing programs that we love like Nova and Breakthrough, really leaning into some of that STEM education. And for high school, we're going to be seeing a lot of incredible social studies content, um, a lot of discussion around poets, Shakespeare, Maya Angelou, the civil rights movement. We're going to be having programs from American Masters and American Experience. So it's going to be a really incredible time for students and families to sit and learn together. So while that's going on, we also have another resource available. So if you go to our website at WTCITV.org and go to our Kids and Education tab, you will find an area for education resources. And what we've done here is we've gone through all of PBS's learning materials and created one-pagers for families or students to be able to access learning activities, games, and videos that relate, again, to those learning objectives and teaching standards that we have throughout all the counties we serve. So I know for me, a really big part of my self-care is having something to inspire me and something Something fun to get my mind off of what's happening around us so we really tried to make sure that all of these activities were catered to have fun and learning so again if you go to that element on our website that resource education you will see that there's a lot of really fun things that you can do um, available on your um, iPad or your smartphone or your computer and also today we will be updating those resources to include um, a Spanish edition so that is all I have. I'm going to be giving it back to Allison and our Chief of Schools, Neely Parker. Thank you so much, Aaliyah. And now I am here with Neely Parker, who is Chief of Schools for HCS. There are a lot of chiefs. I feel like I need, <laughs> I need a title upgrade because I want to be chief of something. I, I'm, I feel just like lesser, right? But <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. And uh, you have a lot to go over. And I know, again, we're going to start with yes. our word of the evening, our word of the week, our word for a while, which is grace. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how grace is folding into the current continued learning environment. Sure. So let me first of all say that when we left school on Friday, March 13th, who would have thought that from that day to where we are now, that so much would have happened. And so when I think about grace, I think a lot about our teachers that are sitting at home, 
they're working so hard, Allison, and they have done some amazing things in no time. I think about our parents who are at home trying to get it all done and figure this out. And so when I think about Grace, I think about, number one, thank you. <laughs> thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you are doing. But also, I want to just remind everyone that as we navigate this new season, it doesn't all have to be done in one day. We have time on our side now, and um, we're going to get through this together. It's funny because my husband and I were walking through our neighborhood, and he said, one good thing about this current era is no one has FOMO, right? There is no fear of missing out. <laughs> right. There's no soccer game Absolutely. to get to. You're not missing That's a concert. Right. You're not late for a dinner. You're not going right. to be disinvited to a birthday party. You know, yeah. there's really, we're in such a mode of presence, right? right? Like we're, right. we're here and we're being present like we've never been before, you know? Right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the, the hot button issues. I know Dr. Johnson had talked about this at the beginning of the hour, but mm -hmm. grades. I know yes. a lot of people at home, especially some of our rising sophomores and juniors, especially who are looking sure. to the future and possibly going to, to technical school or college or university are thinking, how is this going to look on my transcript? And I know right. they are not alone. What, what's right. the grace that we're giving to those students? So right now, what we've communicated to schools and what we would also say to our parents is that number one, we honor the work that you are doing. So if a student has taken the time to complete the work, it is our job to make sure that we honor and recognize that work. So currently, our teachers are working to provide assignments to students through daily communication and that will take place until April 3rd. And remember, spring break is coming. So it is important for our parent to know, our students to know that we are asking you to attempt that work. Our teachers that have access to students and we've worked diligently to make sure our students are accessible online. If they're not, there are packets that are being provided. But the work that is being given, grades will be given for participation in that assignment. And what I mean by participation is that right now is our moment to really give students a chance to deepen their learning and deepen their practice in the skills that are essential. So I think about my favorite basketball player. So I'll, a lot of people have learned about Kobe, heard about Kobe Bryant late, right. lately. My favorite player at one time was Michael Jordan. Yes. And I know he's retired, but I read a story about Kobe Bryant that he actually um, had a critical moment in a game and he kind of flubbed it up at the end. He missed two critical shots. But as a star player, what he did after that game is he rented a local high school gym and he kept taking those shots. He just kept taking those shots. We've worked for three quarters of the school year. And so if we don't stay engaged and participate in continuing our learning, I don't wanna lose ground and when the moment comes, I miss that shot. So what we've done is we've worked hard to provide a service to our parents. If all of us are gonna be home right now, we want our kids to have something to do. It doesn't have to all be done in one day, but it's about keeping engagement, and keeping your skills sharp. So right. when it comes time, you are ready for the big game or for the big performance. I love that. And mm -hmm. it's also being able to navigate. We, I know my husband is home working. I've got mm -hmm. a home office. Our three boys are home in various states of, of mm -hmm. discipline and academic, yeah. like having their own space and, and being able to navigate that. Yeah. Um, I know, look, one of the boys that we have at home is a senior in high school. Yes. And I know last week, and I'm sure this week too, one of the most popular questions we got, besides will there be prom, yeah. is what <laughs> is going on with graduation? Yeah. Now look, I know you don't have all the answers, but I would love for right. you to address that Neely for the members of our community who are watching and especially those seniors right sure. now who have really when you talk about that analogy right they they've mm -hmm. made it all the way to that fourth quarter and they're at the they're at the first yard line nearly yeah. and they want to know if they're going to be able to cross it so um, this is the hardest part it's the part that we can't control yeah. and so the part that we can't control is that um, we don't know what's coming next and that's, I think, the hardest part for even our families sitting at home. So this is what we have committed to, is regardless of, we, of what we know or don't know at this point in time, we are striving to make the opportunity available to our students. 
What we're dealing with right now and just being um, up front is that our local government, our local city government has, has issued even today an announcement that all non-essential uh, contact. I, I know I had tickets to the Tivoli this weekend to see a concert and the Tivoli's been closed down. The Memorial Auditorium has been closed down. We found out today that the UTC Arena has been closed down. So what we are working to do is give some time, see how some things are going to go, and we are exploring what our options may be even on into June and July. What we would never want to do is to withhold this moment from our seniors. This is a really important uh, milestone for your life. And yeah. so, uh, although we don't have a definitive answer today, what we know today is that uh, we are out through spring break and then spring break is over April 13th. And so if, if anything should change between now and then, we will give updates. But as of right now, we're exploring every option, live stream, virtual opportunities, you name it, we're exploring that. So the message is, we don't know what it's going to look like, but look, seniors out there, you will graduate, right? <laughs> if we have to do it by Zoom, right. you are going to graduate. <laughs> so I know Aaliyah had just talked to us about how PBS has been working so hard to pull from our thousands of catalog uh, media mm -hmm. and to align that with your online curriculum and what the right. teachers are doing. Can you give us a little insight into that? Sure. So if you um, go to our HCS Continued Learning link, we have now, since we were on, on air last week, we now have a new link under our HCS Continued Learning site where parents can now find resources. Great. And one of the great resources we have accessible is the PBS link. And let me tell you, as a parent, if you've not checked this out, it really touches a lot. If you're a pre-K mom or if you have students in high school, especially for those younger learners, it's kind of hard to know what do you do with a four-year-old. But I know when I had a younger child at home, they loved PBS Kids. And so I highly encourage parents to check out that link. And then who knew that you could watch a television show on PBS Kids and do some great engaging activities. And so um, that site is being updated constantly. We have new web links for parents, but you know, th like the PBS link, but um, we are constantly uploading vetted, really good, really worthy resource sites for our families and for our students. Well, well. and I was telling Dr. Johnson before we went on air that he is like the new Mr. Rogers because I understand <laughs> that he can't wait to get home and take off his tie and take yes. off his jacket. And if anybody and everybody remembers yes. Mr. Rogers, as he came in, he did exactly what we're asking people to do now right. to stay healthy, to wash their hands. <laughs> Don Muller, who is head of Children's Hospital, will love me for this. Don't forget, wash your hands for 20 seconds. Use right. the hand sanitizer. Take right. your clothes off and your shoes off once you've been outside. Emulate Dr. Rogers. Yeah. And look, Neely, before you go, I know there are thousands, literally thousands of teachers out there who are doing not only the ordinary but extraordinary things, especially yeah. during this extraordinary time. Yeah. Can you give us a sense of some of those teachers who you've noticed through, through this yeah. past week? So, like I said earlier, I am just in awe of the work that I've seen our, our practitioners um, do. And so, one of the people we wanted to highlight tonight was Coach Wood from Hickson Elementary. And if you haven't caught his YouTube channel, and maybe you're working at home, I highly recommend that you check out Coach Wood. Because if you just need a minute that you're just done, and you need to get up and move, I highly recommend that you catch catch Coach Wood from Hickson Elementary. He'll get you moving. You'll, you'll smile when you're finished. And I promise you, you'll feel better after you watch some of, the, some of his, I mean, look at that. <laughs> Who wouldn't be laughing at that? And I have to say, it's not just Coach Wood. I mean, so many amazing, catch story time in the evenings. Our principals are reading to kids. I mean, great, great stuff is coming out of this moment. And that's it. When I talk about grace, I mean, we all have to give ourselves a break. Who, like I said, one week ago, who would have thought we are where we are now? I so. agree. Well, Neely, thank you for all the work you're doing. And I agree. The only thing that we want going viral this week are <laughs> fabulous teacher videos. Thank yes. you to Coach Wood and all those <laughs> teachers out there. And thank you to all of you who have been calling in. We're going to pitch it now to Jill to give us an update on some of the great questions you've been asking. 
All right, great. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Neely, for a terrific segment. We have lots of questions coming in, in to our phone bank, so keep calling 423-498-5437. Press 1 for English or 2 for Spanish. You can talk to Dr. Justin Robertson, to Marty Leonard, to Dr. Johnson, Dr. Parker, or Dr. Drake. So call in with your questions. I'll share some of those now with you. The first was actually a comment. Someone called to say that they saw some of our school board members riding buses today, giving out food to kids. So we want to give a shout out to our school board for their support throughout the district, throughout all of our kids. Thank you, school board, for all that you do for the children of Hamilton County Schools. Jake from Saudi Daisy uh, wants to know, if I left any personal items at home, can I get them? Yes, Jake, call your school, talk to the school's principal, and if it's something that's important, um, they can arrange for a time for you to come in and pick that up. Don't just go to the school though, just call first to be sure that the building is open. Carrie from Ottawa High School asks, will we be having a graduation this summer or not at all? Seniors are very stressed and so are their parents. We hear you, Carrie. We're worried about it too and we will find a solution. One way or the other, your students will graduate. We will have something for them. We don't know yet if it will be in June or July or a virtual graduation, but there will be a graduation for our seniors. We can assure you of that. A uh, Normal Park student called, hello, go Lightning Normal Park, um, wants to know if school will be pushed into summer to make up these days. Well, no, it will not be pushed into summer. We've applied for a waiver with the state, and so um, school will end at the time that school will end. So do your virtual learning and learn all you can until we are actually back in school. Lorna from Brainerd has students at Brainerd High School. She wants to know what sites are giving food and how can we find bus stops that are giving food to high school students? That's a great question, Lorna. So we are running buses every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday out of um, four or three parts of Hamilton County. They're running all of the elementary bus routes, um, but high school students can go to those bus stops and pick up food as well. So the food is available to anyone from zero to age 18. The students do have to be present to get the food at that time. But um, really our best advice is the buses are rolling out at about 11, between 11 and 12. As they go into neighborhoods, they're honking horns, they're making themselves known. Watch for yellow school buses, watch for them to stop at anywhere that they stop for elementary students, and students can go and pick up um, lunch and breakfast from those stops. Another question, Mina from Normal Park asks, what about kids who don't have a device or the internet? Great question. So all of our sixth through 12th grade students should have a Chromebook. They should have taken it home. We've been giving out devices to elementary school students who have come for pickups. There will be more devices given out tomorrow to students who don't have them. So check our website for that information and we'll have some additional devices in about a week. If you are struggling with internet, check our website for that as well. We actually have some drive up internet polls posted on school campuses throughout the district and in other locations. Those are posted on our website as well, but you can also call this number, 423-493-0350. I'll say that again, 423-493-0350. That is our technology hotline and you can get information about how to Oh, there it is, add um, uh, internet access to your home um, or to find the closest place to get internet access. So call that number for help with that question. We have a comment from a Red Bank, a parent from Red Bank who called to thank all of our teachers, school cafeteria staff, and bus drivers for their help. It has been a huge help. Thank you for parents for your appreciation of our cafeteria workers and our bus drivers and all of our teachers and our principals. We do appreciate that. Linda from Ottawa would like to know, will the packets be available to print at Staples? Will they be available each week? Linda, be sure to check with your school first and um, get those answers from each individual school this week. Um, but Staples is standing ready to help us and schools are printing packets and information as well. Those are all the questions I have for now. I'm going to send it back to Allison and to Jennifer Knowles. And I wanna just ask, 
throw this one question out because it will feed into their next segment. Hey, this is from a parent um, who posted this online. How do we help our kids cope with adjusting to their new schedules and fears surrounding our current health crisis? Perfect question to introduce you to Jennifer Knowles, our wellness expert. Back to you, Allison. Thank you, Jill, and to that parent, thank you, because I think that is really one of the most pressing issues that we're facing right now is how to deal with stress. Yes. You know, I have, I have several friends and family members who, in, in normal times, right, and in, in the best of times, have issues with anxiety and depression, right? And I think at this point, those are exacerbated for everybody. We're gonna start with our word of the night. Bring it up. Grace, we, we, we have to give grace not only to others, but to ourselves. And I'm thrilled, Jen, that you are here. Thank you. Um, Jen is not only um, has been uh, an educator, a classroom teacher, but has been working with Hamilton County Schools um, for, for many years now and implementing these techniques that you're going to share with us tonight on how to alleviate some of that stress. I know to some specific tactics on, on how people can handle this. Yes. Um, let, let's start. You know, people are watching this right now. Like I think at the, at the onset, we just want to say, it's gonna be okay, right? It's gonna yes. be okay. It has to be okay yeah. um, in order to uh, thrive in this situation. And I, I just wanna acknowledge um, the experience um, and all the layers that are involved in this, like the uncertainty and when we don't know, when we don't have answers, we go looking for them and that can create a sense of chaos too. Um, the vulnerability around learning this new learning style um, for all of us, myself included, even as an educator, and consistent stress with balancing work life, home life. Some of us are even struggling and worrying about our jobs being at risk, if not already. And that's another added stress, frustration with the homeschooling, the pressure um, you know, of trying to do it right, that being the ace in that situation, um, and maybe even sprinkling a little bit of resentment and, gray, um, and um, guilt in there about not doing it right, whatever that means to you. And so I'm saying all of that because I wanna acknowledge that this is really hard and you are not alone. We are all struggling in our own way and I think it sometimes feels really peaceful to find the common humanity in that. Yeah, and I think we see a little of this on social media, right? And people yes. have been, I think, not just very helpful to each other, but vulnerable yes. with the struggles. You know, they're for the first time, they're at home working. They have young children or teenagers at home. I joke that anybody who is a parent of a teenager is in a special category because my teenagers have been practicing social distancing for a few years. So it's, uh, <laughs> they're, they're very good at it. I didn't even know I had a 15 year old until he emerged from the basement about two days ago. So. <laughs> Um, but, but some of this is really this new normal. We have to figure out new tactics. Yes. So, so how are you handling that at home? You have two young children at yes. home. How has that been working out for you? Because I feel like, you know, we look at you mm. as this model of grace oh, yes. uh -huh. and, and meditative state, uh -huh. but, but tell us how that's been happening. Well, uh, let me normalize for all of you out there that even though that is true about me and um, I try my best there and I was an educator, um, it's real for me too. I think um, I was telling Allison earlier that I felt like um, one day last week was successful with my homeschooling schedule, which I now term as my loose schedule, um, as my way of giving myself grace and self-compassion that um, it's not gonna be perfect. But today I was ready to roll out a new day and start all over again. And I got through the morning and it was feeling good. Lunchtime rolls around and work starts calling and I have to get something turned in really quickly. And so what did I do? I told my kids we had to let go of the plan. We needed to get on some video games for over an hour while I did work. And you know, we tried to go back to the academic time and they were not having it. And so we did a little check in with our moods. One hour I begged for and got 30 minutes. So, which I consider to be a success. But at the end of the day, I started kind of questioning myself, wondering and being hard on myself um, and criticizing myself for not doing the things that I had agreed to do from that morning. And so what I had to do was remind myself um, of self-kindness and self-compassion and tell myself that it's okay. And I have to believe that, that it's okay. I'm doing the best that I can. You all are doing the best that you can. Um, I won't put my hand on my heart because I won't uh, be able to be heard here, but just reminding yourself and putting that pressure um, there just is so important to remembering that we have to take care of ourselves. And I will tell you this, one of my best friends told me this great piece of advice that perfection is boring. So if you take nothing else from tonight, 
perfection is boring. So just <laughs> so go with boring. it. All right, so what are some of the tactics that if someone's looking at this at home and says, it's easy for you to say, find grace, right? And, and don't be so self-critical. But yeah. I, I really need, I, I'm one of those perfectionists, I will admit, but I need a routine and I need somebody to say, this is why I have to go to a gym normally, right? Somebody to tell me what to do in order to be healthy. What are just some practical tips that you can give to the people watching to help them alleviate even just a little bit of that that stress and to allow them a little bit more grace for not just others but for themselves in the coming weeks sure so these uh, three strategies that I'm going to offer you this evening are really about taking care of our emotions um, and so the first one is called name it to tame it anybody who's worked with me knows that I love that I cannot claim that phrasing as my own but it's really important and what it means is name it to tame it is just being able to notice an emotion that you're having and name it, whether that's naming it out loud, naming it in my mind. And what that does is it takes away that emotion's power because emotions, intelligence is a superpower. And, you know, instead of these emotions handling us, this is a way to handle those emotions. And now when I hear name it to tame it, I'm immediately thinking I'm gonna name one of my kids right. and wanna tame him. So I know, I that's know. Not, that's that's uh, blaming it to shame it, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> We're gonna avoid the uh, blame and shame in here and the you are making me angry or you are making me frustrated. Although we want to say those things, right? What it's doing is um, putting blame and shame into this equation and we wanna kind of take responsibility and accountability and own our own emotions so that we can better manage them. Um, so that's my first all right. Tool. Name it to tame it. We got it. We got it in our in our tool. Number well, one. Good. Number two is a mood check-in. I actually have an app on my phone that pings me every morning and asks me how I'm feeling. And I choose an emoji, um, and that's that's a 30-second little engagement. But what it does is it's actually really informative because um, if we can look at inf emotions as information and not something that's happening to us, it can actually kind of dictate and um, manage what we're going to do moving forward and how we relate to our family in this situation. Um, and so I would, you know, a lot of us have devices. We can um, think about hard times in our day mm -hmm. and set reminders of how are you feeling. And it's really important to do as a family too. It has really helped my kids and myself in our ability to manage our schedule that we've set up for ourselves. And uh, you can even do a sticky note. If, if the pings are not happening for you, that's also a really great way to um, take care of ourselves and take care of our emotions so that we can use that as information moving forward. And then, so I tell you, I leave up a sticky that says I'm frustrated and my kid leaves, up, you know, leaves one up that says I'm, I'm bored and I've got a lot of energy and I'm also frustrated, right? Do we just kind of say, great, thanks for the sticky. How do we pivot from, from naming that emotion, right, to really dealing with that, especially as now these very close family units that we weren't a week ago? Yeah, so I think if you're going to name it and your son's going to name it, um, I think that one of the things that I would recommend is thinking about, okay, so what could we think about moving into this next part of our day? So not thinking about what can we do for the rest of the day because of your frustration in this moment, because our emotions are always changing. Our feelings are always changing. So just thinking about, okay, so if we're frustrated and we have this thing that we're planning on doing according to a schedule or according to just a conversation, whatever's happening for you and your family, that you can just kind of think about the frustration and what's possible because that emotion is present and breathing into it and accepting it and maybe just lessening the intensity so that it's easier to move on to the next step. And I think also acknowledging the other person's emotion, right? Absolutely. Sometimes it's 99% of it. Our, our One of our sons was, was a little bit stressed and we finally said, look, none of us can control the situation, but we can control how we respond, right? Yes. But I also want to honor that emotion. I don't ever want to negate somebody by saying, get over it, right? Um, and part of this is also being able to really take stock in how we're feeling and taking a moment. I know that's like your third yes. tactic, right? And which yes. I need reminding of every day. What is that for people? Uh, the power of the pause. Yes. Um, so a pause, just when you're feeling like you're about to flip your lid, and I can tell you that all of these things have happened to me, um, probably today. Um, and when you feel like you're about to flip your lid and you want to kind of exercise just putting it out there, sometimes just doing nothing is the best thing you can do in a situation. Pausing, because I think sometimes when we're frustrated or having high emotions, we feel like we have to have all the answers right then and there. We have to let people know how we're feeling. And so I think it's really important that we can take a deep breath. 
I even like feel my shoulders dropping. I know, I just felt a total release there just from breathing. And just do nothing in that moment. And sometimes when we do that, we become less reactive and more responsive, intelligently responsive to our emotions. It's not easy, but even if you were to do it once in a day, I would consider that a huge success. And again, just giving ourselves the self-kindness and grace that we all deserve during this time. Well, thank you, Jen. And You're just to recap, welcome. so name it to tame it, the mood check-in, and everybody, let's do it one more time. Take a pause, right? Yes. Yes. Well, thanks for joining us. And we are going to pause what we're doing here <laughs> to go over to Jill Levine for one last check-in with our illustrious leadership team and the fabulous questions that our community has been throwing at them. Jill, what's going on? <sighs> Oh, thanks for the great advice, Jen and Allison. That breath made all the difference. Uh, we have so many, so many more questions from all of you and comments. And this one comes from Kathy, um, who has students at Wallace A. Smith and Udawa High. She says, thank you for doing this. Thank you for reminding all homeschool parents about grace. She appreciates all the resources. Kathy, thank you so much for the encouragement to our team. We also received a call from a parent from Battle Academy who said thank you to all of our teachers for all they are doing. Melissa from East Brainerd called and asked, will there be any flexibility for my son to complete assignments? I am working from home and cannot help him much. Yes, Melissa, grace is the word of the night. We will work with all families, contact your child's teacher and school for support, and they will definitely work with you. James from Hickson would like to know what restrictions are there on children receiving food at the bus stops? James, the answer to that one is any child ages zero through 18, regardless of what Hamilton County School they attend, can pick up a lunch and breakfast at the bus stops. Children must be present to get those meals, but any student can do that. Juanita would like to know, if schools do not open um, by April 13th, will childcare be opening sooner or during the summer? And can we give parents resources for childcare? Um, the answer to that one is that we really don't know. We won't be able to open schools again until uh, we get the appropriate guidance to do so. We hear from um, federal and state officials on that. So at this time, um, we all just kind of have to do, do the best we can, but are not able to provide childcare options yet. We will as soon as we're able to though, of course. Another question from the North River Learning Community about whether there will be another time to pick up devices at schools. The answer to that is yes. Please check our website. There will be more opportunities tomorrow and in the coming weeks. So keep checking back on that. You can always call our hotline as well for questions. Tristan from Saudi Daisy wants to know when will school resume? He wants to get back to school. He misses his teachers and he misses his classmates. Um, right now our tentative plan is April 13th. Of course we just really don't know. This is a you know, changing situation and we're all just moving forward um, the best we can um, and figuring it out as we go. So Tristan, stay tuned and we will keep you updated uh, each and every day on our website and through calls and email updates as well. And of course, we'll be here every Monday night to sh answer your questions too. Um, believe those are all of the questions that I have time for tonight, um, but feel free to call us during the week. Our hotline is posted on our website and we have a technology hotline. We have a Spanish speaking hotline and an English speaking hotline. So call us with your questions. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm going to throw it back to Allison and Dr. Johnson for just a few more words. Listen to you using those terms, throw it back. I love it. Gosh, this is why she's a chief. She picks up everything like on the spur of the moment. Thank you, Jill Levine. And I'm just going to be called chief of, chief of WTCI. I hope Bob Colkane, our president, doesn't mind that. So Dr. Johnson, look, it's been a lot of information that we have thrown out at parents tonight. We know the word of the evening and the word in all of our households needs to be today and moving forward, grace. Grace, most right? definitely. I mean, that, that's it. Even as we're talking and, and we're talking about some of the some of the guidelines in place, you looked at me and said, look, at the end of the day, we want kids to be healthy and yep. nourished. We want teachers to be supported and we want parents and families to, to know that they are not alone in all of this. Absolutely. So I, I'll tell you what I'm so, what I get so excited about is I got to sit there and take calls and I got a call from a third grader 
uh, that's a student at Daisy and a fourth grader at East Lake, and they had technology questions. And the one, she was so funny, I asked her for her address because we were trying to get the Wi-Fi uh, connection, and she just hung up on me uh, because she thought this, this creepy man. Um, but I got <laughs> enough information. We're going to get your Wi-Fi squared away. I think grace is so key. Um, second, you know, I will say this, we're better together. Um, we've got a spirit week going on this week. I believe tomorrow is hat day um, or tomorrow is sports teams day. Uh, Wednesday is hat day. Thursday is uh, blue day for Hamilton County. Friday, wear your school colors. And then the last thing I'd share is um, I always think about the other side of challenging moments. And so although we're going through a very tough time, uh, the reality is on the other side of this, there'll be so many new skills that will be developed because of this moment. And even more importantly than that, the resiliency of this community, the resiliency of our teachers, our leaders, and our students, our parents uh, is absolutely second to none. So we're, we're, we're grateful uh, to be able to go through this together. And we're grateful for you, Dr. Johnson, for the whole team, for WTCI, and thank you for joining us tonight.